For Lee Woolman, acting is not just the creation of a character. It is a function of autobiography, the deeply personal art, a form of expression that reaches into the private most corners of the heart and lays bare the inner self. As a best-selling author, Ms. Ullman has given us two volumes of memoirs that present her life as an ever-changing series of choices. And every phase and fiber of her being is open to reflection, to self-examination. A Look at Leave, put together by Academy Award-winning director Richard Kaplan, is an intimate documentary portrait of a truly remarkable individual. Actress, author, lover, mother, child of Norway, woman of the world. Powerful excerpts from her films and a compelling interview with Lifetime collaborator Ingmar Bergman give this documentary an extraordinary depth and insight. But it is Ullmann's own exceptional candor and what Bergman calls her own special atmosphere that gives it something more, something truly radiant. And now, a look at Leave. was the most demanding part I ever had and because it asked things from me which were sort of the most of what I can do today, both as an actress and as a human being on screen, how much I, I dare to give of, of myself. It's always like this. I say that I love you. And then I say that I hate you. And what frightened children you become and completely ashamed. And so I love you once more, oh no. <laughs> I can't stand Has, uh, so much uh, emotional vitality and she uh, she works the whole time she she finds out things her of her of her own and uh, then she has all those things that is so marvelous for 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 great actors she has this uh, what you call charisma or atmosphere
The rest of the most wonderful thing is that she's creative. She has a creative mind. Uh, she comes to you and says, uh, Inma, I have been, I think this here, uh, couldn't we do it that way? Because uh, it's much better than uh, uh, this way. And uh, that's wonderful because she, she is generous. She gives you, st uh, she stimulates you the whole time. Ich muss da schließen, oder? Så länge ser man till dig själv så har jag ingenting att säga. Du har ju ditt fulla frihet. Du kan ju gå när du vill, hur du vill. Jag tycker det är inte om det. Du gör som du tycker. Du gör som du tycker. Du hade ju så bra var ju så lycklig innan vi träffades. Jag hade alltså någonting. Jag hade ett lyckligt minne av min man och vår kärlek. Och då har du inte det? Jag trodde på sanningen. Jag levde i sanningen. Du gjorde det? Det har du förstört nog med din jävla lunge. Sluta nu. Du bestämmer inte över mig. Jag säger vad jag vill på dig. Skrik inte åt mig. Jag talar hur högt jag vill på dig. Du betalar inte över mig. Du bara bra på helvete. Du kan bara på helvete. Du betalar inte över mig. first met Leave, did you have any idea then that she had such a remarkable talent? Uh, I, I don't know. It's only so. Uh, I have been in this profession for 35 years, and uh, I think uh, a good director immediately feels if uh, an actor has talent or not. I think it, uh, it's about 10 seconds you would need to judge. So a picture of Bibi Anderson and me together, which inspired him to, to make a picture about two, two women who looked alike and adapted to each other's personality. We started with the persona and I can't remember which year it was, but I think we have been working on uh, eight pictures together. It has been so wonderful to work with her because she gives so much. And I have not uh, tried to always photograph her beautifully. She's so emotional. So just when the camera starts and Ingma sets uh, start, then, then you can see it in her face because you can see that she's pale and then suddenly it comes in he her eyes. It comes in her skin, it gets red and, and everything. And I feel sometimes, when I'm very close, that everything what she gives comes inside her. It gives a special feeling. For what reason do you sneer so often, Maria? You see it? You sneer too often. See, Maria? And look under your eyes sharp, scarcely noticeable lines of your impatience and, and your ennui. Can all of that actually be seen there? Yeah, but I feel it when you kiss me. I think you're joking with me. It's evident where you see it. Really well. You see it in yourself. Because we're so alike, you and I. Do you mean the selfishness, coldness, concern. Sometimes when you are focusing with a camera, you get so touched by her performance, so, so, so you can almost, almost forget to, to, to pan and tilt and do what, you forget all the technical things. That is what I find so remarkable with, with uh, Lee. You always say in America that you love each other, especially in, in Hollywood. Everybody says, oh, I love yes, you. Yes, I, yes, I, I love you, and I, I love you, and to kiss you, and the darling, and sweetheart, and uh, everything. And, uh, 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 but I must say that, uh, that uh, I love her, and I love to work with her. I, I love her as, as an actress, and I love her as a human being.
She's just a great actor. She's extremely professional, and she's easy to get along with, and it's a pleasure to be working with her. She's uh, the greatest. and I lived in Japan until I was two years old. Actually, I spoke Japanese before I spoke Norwegian. When Norway was occupied by the Germans, Daddy joined the Norwegian Air Force. We left Japan, not believing that Japan should enter the war at all. We just turned the key in our house, believing you should just go over and beat this terrible Hitler and go back again to Japan. And it certainly turned out to be very, very different for myself and my children. My husband joined the Norwegian Air Force in Canada. We stayed for about three years or a little more. So I don't think we remember at all. I have fragments. I can remember holding a man in the hand. I know it must have been my daddy, but it's the hands I remember. She went to kindergarten or nursery school in Toronto. That was her first school. She also went to kindergarten at Flushing, outside New York. And I remember that teacher out there, she remarked many times to me that we had a very fine kind of fantasy. So she said to me, please, Take care of that, Mrs. Ullman, and never put it down. My father died just before the war in Europe ended. It took me years to really understand that I had lost somebody, and then cope with the loss. My mother, you know, when we were children, very seldom spoke about sad things. I don't think I was aware that I had a grandfather who died in prison camp. He was one of the first to be imprisoned by the Germans and sent to Dachau, where he later died. and I felt there was nothing I was learning in school that would help me. So I, I went to London and I studied there for almost a year. I went home to Oslo and tried to get into the state school of drama, and I failed. I became a pupil of acting in a little provincial theatre, and I had a debut in the diary of Anne Frank. The first time it said in the newspaper, you know, the actress leave all rooms. Fantastic. It was a dream really come true. Then I went to Oslo and I was first at the theater called the Norwegian Theater and then at the National Theater. You know, it was very good for her to work at this theater in Oslo for such a long time because it was such a good school. And